you're new to film, you probably want to start building your shopping list. So let's see what needs to be on it. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -mm. That's not better in my head. In addition to your tank, your reel, and your lid, you're also going to want a pair of scissors for 35 millimeter or 120 size film. A bottle opener helps significantly in opening the bottle. You can use a standard beer bottle type. Uh, there are some that mount onto the cabinet uh, specifically for 35 millimeter film and so on. You're also going to want a thermometer. Now this is a Delta One thermometer. They are pretty inexpensive. I want to say four dollars, four and a half dollars, on uh, B&H's website. They work very, very well. You can also find them on the used market sold by Kodak. Either one works very well, very inexpensive. You can also get a much larger, more accurate uh, thermometer. Again, Kodak made them. I believe this one is also made by Delta. Nope, it's Patterson. <clears throat> you do not need to get anything super expensive. I want to say this one was probably $20. Now, the difference between these and something for your kitchen is the temperature range. A kitchen, you're cooking food. And food typically needs to be well above room temperature. Whereas black and white, we're dealing with 70 degrees, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 20 degrees Celsius. And with color, we're dealing upwards of 100 degrees. Food, on the other hand, is going to be 130, 140, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So meat thermometers, candy thermometers, not always the best option. So just keep that in mind. Um, this particular model, very inexpensive highly recommended, um, especially for a beginner. A thermometer like this is very good for um, a little bit more advanced where you might need something more specific uh, or a little bit more detailed because the scale is opened up a little bit more. You're also going to need some kind of measuring cup to mix your chemicals in and measure out the proper amount. You can get them in a large one liter size. I'd also recommend getting a couple of smaller sizes as you go along. That way you can measure something small like 16 millimeters of stop bath stock. Here you can measure out a full liter of fixer, developer, whatever you need, um, toner and so forth. Then you're gonna need something to store it in when uh, you've, you've mixed it up. Something like stop bath, you can use over and over. Uh, fixer as well, your developer, you may not you need to use the full liter at the time. So get some storage bottles. Um, these are polyethylene, polypropylene, polyethylene, uh, plastic. Get the plastic ones. You can get glass, not required to get glass and is not required to get dark brown glass. Most of the time your dark room is going to be dark. If you're not working in it, you probably have the lights out or they're stored in a cabinet or both. So uh, dark brown, not necessarily required. Um, but if you have it, use it. If you're going to pour them into bottles and have a small opening like that, get yourself a funnel. These are cheap. Pick them up. To actually mix the chemicals up, a stir paddle of some sort is very, very helpful. Don't use uh, cheap flatware that you would get from a kitchen store um, or even like the dollar store if that's your budget. Uh, find yourself something plastic. Uh, some of the chemicals, they can, um, they can start to dissolve cheaper metals. Stainless steel is okay, but the quality of something stainless steel from the, uh, the dollar store or something like that is questionable. Something plastic like this works just fine. Don't use a hand mixer. Don't want to introduce a lot of oxygen that's not necessarily supposed to be there. And then the last major thing that you might want to get, or I strongly suggest you get, is a timer. Now, when I was doing my uh, agitation video, I was using a small Kodak timer. It's a very mechanical, 
device, no batteries. You wind it up with a spring on the back. It's a very nice loud click as you could hear in that video. But if you're doing something like sheet film, which has to be done in complete darkness, you're not going to be able to see the hand and the click isn't always necessarily something you can use. Besides, who wants to count a bunch of clicks? So instead, I would recommend that you get something like a gray lab timer. Now this is a simple timer. You plug it into the wall, um, but it counts down for you. It has a buzz at the end if you need it. You can turn that feature off. But the hands, more importantly, glow in the dark. Therefore, if you're working in complete darkness, like with sheet film in an open tray or tank, this will be useful so you can see the time that you're you're dealing with rather than just hear it. So this is beneficial. You can pick these up pretty easily on the used market. New, they run close to $100. So I would recommend finding one on the used market. Some are metal like this, some are plastic bodied, um, but they do work very, very well. They seem virtually indestructible and um, I'd recommend it. If the glow in the dark paint does begin to fade, you can always refresh that with a new coat of, of glow in the dark paint. And then the last thing, which I almost neglected, would be gloves. I strongly, strongly recommend that you use gloves when you're working in the dark room, um, particularly with film, uh, but I also use them when I'm doing prints. You don't have to use um, latex if you have a latex allergy these are nitrile and i pick them up very cheaply at uh, harbor freight tools you can get a whole box for i want to say maybe five or six dollars and it'll carry roughly around a hundred so that's 50 pairs of, of gloves most of the chemicals blah, 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 blah. <laughs> most of the chemicals that we use in the dark room are um non-toxic they're not going to hurt you but some people do develop a contact dermatitis on their skin when they're dealing with developer in particular but uh, the main reason why i use it is because fixer makes your hands stink and it is hard to get off there so for the benefit of my wife and my kid i uh i wear these now if you're going to do something more toxic like toning a print or using some older developer formulas like pyro or amidol then you're definitely going to want to wear these because those are toxic they can soak through the skin so i do strongly recommend you get some make sure you pick up the non-powdered i made that mistake once and handled sheet film with a powder glove and turned my negatives a nice smooth frosted white did not print very well so get the non-powdered other than that you should be good to go so get yourself a tank a bottle opener some scissors and a good thermometer and you're actually good for most things measuring cups definitely beneficial bottle to store everything in funnel to uh, make it easier to go into the bottle stir stick and a timer with glow in the dark fingers and you're good to go so Hope that helps you get just set up for your dark room. And if you don't have a dark room, then find yourself a dark place to load your film into the tank. And you can do this in the bathroom. You can do it in the kitchen. Um, you can do it in a laundry room. Anywhere where you might have a little bit of running water, or even if not, you can do it with just a jug of water. You can get yourself a nicely developed roll of film. So get out there, start making photographs, start developing some film. Please like comment and subscribe to the naked photographer and i'll keep making videos hopefully you can find something a little bit useful and um, learn some more photo tips <laughs>